everyone. So now we are coming to the part where I'm reading the Saints of Bengal. And wow. we are continuing the story from last time about Sri Radha Raman Charandas Deva. Last time we could hear nice conversation between Parha Babaji, this is the same person, Radha Raman Charandas Deva, and uh, between him and one priest. So nicely he talked with him and the uh, priest in the end was convinced that Vaishnava religion is the highest religion. And that priest after visited many times this Babaji. So we are continuing after this that on page 160. Once Barha Babaji Mahashaya was going singing and dancing along with a number of devotees to Jagannath Temple. Uh, after cir circumambulating the Samadhi of Vijay Krishna Goswami Mahashaya, on the bank of the Narendra Sarovar. So they went to, uh, to sing with other devotees and dance around Jagannath Temple. As soon as he reached Sudarshan Vallabha, the old house of Vijay Krishna Goswami, he lay prostrate on the ground and began to roll and weep. At that time, there came a disciple of Vijay Krishna Goswami Mahashaya and began to kick him right and left. Babaji Mahashaya's companions kept on looking and began to weep in utter helplessness. They could not say anything to the man for fear of incurring the, the displeasure of Babaji Mahashaya. But Babaji Mahashaya stood up and began to dance in ecstasy and embrace the assaulting man. At that time, there was such effulgence of light from his face and body that his companions could hardly look at him. He held the man by the arm and dancing and singing in a state of trance and entered the Simhadvar of Jagannath Temple. The man, however, not satisfied with what he had done so far, began to throw dust on the face of Babaji Mahashaya with both hands. While Babaji Mahashaya's other companions continued looking at him angrily but helplessly, N uh, Nitya Swarup Brahmachari could not tolerate this. He held the man's arm and began to reproach him for his outlandish and barbarous behavior. But Babaji Mahashaya reproached him in turn. He said soothing words to the man and sent him home after giving him a loving embrace. So it was in, it's interesting, he was being hit by this person and thrown sand 
in his face, but he was singing in ecstasy and hugging this person. A Mahapurusha, who is by nature benevolent and forgiving, does not take anyone's offense. However, the Lord, who loves his pure devotees more than his own self, cannot forgive a person who does any harm to them. As the Lord wished it, therefore, the man developed high fever that very night. He experienced such excruciating pain in those very parts of his body, which corresponded to the parts of Babaji Mahashaya's body he had struck, that he could not sleep the whole night. The fire of repentance burned his whole body. The next morning, he went running and fell at the feet of Babaji Mahashaya and said, I am a great sinner. I have committed a great offense at your feet. God has therefore punished me, and I have been suffering miserably ever since I returned home yesterday. I do not know what my fate is going to be if you do not forgive me. So saying, he began to weep bitterly. Babaji Mahasaya clasped him, hugged him close to his heart and said, I can say on oath that I, that I have not taken any offense on account of your behavior. You take Harinama and be at peace. But the man would not be convinced and would not stop weeping and wailing. Baba Mahashaya then took pity on him and said, Look here, if you really feel that you have done some wrong, then go and submit to your guru. It is the guru who feels offended if his disciple does any wrong and he alone can forgive him. If he is pleased and forgives, no one else can do any harm to him, not even Krishna. Has not Sanatana Goswami said in his Guru Vandana, if Krishna is displeased, the, the Guru can protect. If Guru is displeased, Krishna cannot protect. When one surrenders to the Guru, the Guru takes, he, takes him under his protection. He alone can favor or disfavor him, punish or reward him, no one else. So, the disciple went to the Samadhi of Vijay Krishna Goswami Mahasaya. Uh, you have a microphone on. You heard me, Udava. You have a microphone on, so we have sound. Okay. 
So the disciple went to the Samadhi of Vijay Krishna Goswami Mahashaya, lay himself prostrate before it, and wept and prayed. Afterwards, every day before going to the sea for bath, he also went to Babaji Mahashaya and requested him forgiveness. Both Govinda Das and Navadvip Dada had Sakya or friendly bhava towards Baba Mahashaya. This is borne out by an interesting episode, which is as follows. According to the instructions of Baba Mahashaya, the daily routine of his companions in the Janja Pita Mat was Trishandya Kirtana, Kirtan in the morning, noon, and evening, sea bath, sea bath and also sea bath, Jagannath Darshana and Kirtana before Jagannath, Madhukari Diksha. For the math was usually done by Madhu Dada, Madhu brother, like that, older brother. But sometimes Baba Mahashaya asked others as well to go for Bhiksha. Bhiksha is actually like asking for uh, donations or alms. One day, he called Navadvip Dada and Govinda Dada and said, Both of you go for Bhiksha in the lanes and by lanes of the city, and on your return, give everything you get to me. So every day, they went for Viksha and on their return gave the bag containing Viksha or whatever they got to Babaji Mahashaya. Baba Mahashaya bowed down to the bag and put it over his head as something most sacred and valuable before he gave it to Lalita Dasi for cooking. So probably they bought some fruits, vegetables, and then these they brought to Babaji. This continued for a number of days. One day, as Navadvip and Govinda returned from Viksha, chanting the name, Baba Mahashaya came out of his room and took the bag containing the Viksha from the hands of Govinda. As he did so, humorous Govinda Dada, animated by Sakya Rasa or friendly sentiment, showered a volley of abuse upon him and went and sat down in dining room. Everyone in the mat was surprised to hear this. Baba Mahashaya remained listening quietly and amazedly with the bag held over his head. After some time, he went to the dining room and said to Govinda Dada, Govinda, have you gone mad? And Govinda said, why? What, what has happened? Babaji tell him, told him, why did you deliver abuses while surrendering the viksha? 
So Guminda said that the abuses were given to me by the people to whom I had gone for Viksha. You had enjoyed that. You, you have enjoyed that whatever I got in Viksha, I must deliver to you. So I delivered to you rice, pulses, and the other things I got. How could I keep the abuses with me? If I did, it would have been difficult for me to digest them. They could have aroused in my mind the feeling of hatred or anger against the people who abused me. So I delivered them to you. So he gave even those things to him. Baba Mahashaya expressed happiness at Govinda's attitude of intimate, loving friendliness, free from fear or hesitance, hesitation, by smiling and giving him a loving embrace. Hmm. One day, when Navadvip Dada and Govinda Dada were going to for Viksha through a lane adjoining the royal palace, chanting Harinama as usual, the guard on duty at the palace shouted, Oh Baba, chanting Harinama in this area is prohibited. Go away from here. Navadvip Dada smiled and said, Why, Baba? Why, Baba? Does not the rule and order of Yama, or the regent of death, prevail here? Harinama is effective against Yama, or Yamaraj. He said this and continued to chant. The guard threatened to beat them. Still they continued chanting, caring little for his threat. And chanting came out of the lane. The Lord may tolerate an offense committed against his, him own, his own self, but he cannot tolerate the offense committed against his name or his devotees. Soon after this episode, cholera broke out in Puri, and it affected most of the area in and around the palace. So much so that the Maharaj himself fell prey to it. He called his guru Shripad Raghunath, da Raghunath Deo Goswami and his minister Kali Babu and said, I'm laid up with cholera. Medicines have proved ineffective. I do not know what to do. Raguna Deva Goswami said, If medicines have failed, the only other remedy is Harinama. I have seen that on two or three occasions when an epidemic broke out in Puri. It disappeared as soon as Sri Radha Raman Charandas Deva went round the city performing, performing Nama Kirtana with his companions. I believe that if he performs Kirtana in the palace, you will soon recover. 
Kalibabu said the same. The Maharaj, the, the Maharaj asked them both to go and request Baba Mahashaya on his behalf to kindly come and grace the palace by his presence and the Kirtana of the Holy Name. They went and conveyed his request to Baba Mahashaya and insisted on his accompanying them to the palace with his companions immediately. Baba Mahashaya complied. So he went with them. The night had already fallen when he reached the palace with his party singing. Pajanitai go Radeshyam Japahare Krishna Hariram. The employees of the palace came out with two torches and escorted them to the room where the Maharaj was lying. The Maharaj asked his attendants to help him to go in the midst of the kirtan. His mother objected, but he did not listen. With the help of his two attendants, he went and bowed down to the kirtana party and then stood aside. Baba Mahashaya and his party encircled him and began to move round him, singing and dancing. The Maharaja felt inspired and energized by the Kirtana. He raised his arms and began to dance himself. Tears constantly flowed, flowed from his eyes, and his face was radiant. It appeared that he had drunk deep of the nectar of the divine name and was in ecstasy. After some time, Baba Mahashaya clasped the Maharaja in his arms and began to dance with him. The rest of his party and the employees of the palace all danced around, around them, singing and clapping their hands with the beats of Kol or Mridanga and Karatal, while Navadvip Das leapt and jumped leaped and jumped, shouting aloud, Jai Nitai, Jai Nitai. The shouts of Haribo also rend the sky from time, in time, time to time. The whole palace seemed to have gone into ecstasy. When Babaji Mahashaya left the Maharaj, he was in tears and the sattvika bhavas appeared all over his body. He said, I am blessed. My illness has proved a blessing in disguise. All that was evil in me is gone forever. He then asked one of his men to take the Sankirtan party in and around each room of the palace. And he did the same. When the Sankirtan was over, the Maharaj rolled on the ground 
to purify his body with the dust of the feet of the Vaishnavas. He then requested Baba Mahashaya to bless him thus by performing Kirtana at the palace every day. Baba Mahashaya said, We shall do as Nitai Chand wills. So we will do what Nitai desires. He returned to his ashrama at 11.30 p.m., dancing and singing with his companions. The Maharaj did not take any medicine thereafter. Yet, he was fully cured. He sent his men every day to bring Baba Mahashaya and his party to the palace for Kirtana. The party continued the Sankirtana for seven days, but Baba Mahashaya accompanied it only for two more days. From that time onwards, the employees of the palace did not obstruct anyone from chanting the name. A few days later, cholera broke out in Puri. Hundreds of lives were lost every day. Baba Mahashaya said to his companions, Look, we are today going to wage a Sankirtana war against cholera. You must all gird, gird up your loins as soldiers of the Sankirtana army. The army will go around the city performing Sankirtana under the command of Nitai Chand. No one must go out of the ring of the army during Sankirtana. If anyone goes out, Nitai Chand will not be responsible for his safety. So the Sankirtana started from Janjapita, Janjapit Mat and reached Sinha, Sinhadwar. At Sinhadwar, Babaji Mahashaya sang and danced with unusual vigor in a manner in which he appeared to be the very image of war rather than of love, in which he usually appeared in his sanctana. The shopkeepers round about, the pandas and pujaris and the passers-by, young and old, men and women, all joined his Sankirtana. The Sankirtana army swelled more and more in numbers as it marched through the streets with Babaji Mahashaya singing, Yama, flee, oh flee, Nitai has come, Gora has come, Advaita has come. On Gora's register is registers, registered our name. No more, no more on us thy claim. So he was singing to Yamaraj that he needs to run away because Nitai has come, Gora has come, Advaita has come. So others repeated the song 
and leaped and jumped like frenzied soldiers on march to conquer Yama, Yamaraj. They were confident that Yama would not la uh, last. Oh, sorry. They were confident that Yama would at last be conquered. Slowly, the Sankirtana party reached Harchandi Sahi. But God knows how and why Fani, PH, Fani, who never disobeyed Baba Mahashaya, got separated from the party and was seen trailing behind against the order and warning of Baba Mahashaya. After some time, he had stomach ache and hurried into Aulia Mat to ease himself. He had one motion and his face became black. Then he ran to Janja Pit Mat, had one or two motions more and lay completely broken on the bed. Lalita Das, uh, so Lalita Dasi and also Kusuma Dasi are the names of two male disciples of Barha Baba, who had Saki Baba and had become Sida in that Baba. So said that Lalita Dasi was very much alarmed to see his condition. When Baba Mahashaya returned from Nagar Kirtan, she said to him, Pani is laid up with cholera. His condition is serious. Babaji said, no surprise. I had warned that whoever would go out of the Sankirtan party would come to grief. Sometime later, Lalita Dasi came again, greatly disturbed and weeping, and said, Come and see, Fanny is dying. His limbs are cramped. Body has become icy cold. Motions, sweating, and vomiting continue. He does not recognize, any, recognize anyone. There is no hope of his survival. Baba Mahashaya wore a long face and said, What can I do? Go and speak to Baba. By Baba, he meant his Shiksha Guru, Sri Gaurahari Das Babaji, who had come to Puri and was presently staying in Janjapit Mat. Lalita Dasi went to him while Baba Mahashaya went to see Fani in his room. When Lalita Dasi said to Gorahari Das Babaji, he said, What can I do? Go and speak to Yadava or Baba Mahashaya. This is one name also, Baba Mahashaya. He then went to see Fani, this person Fani. Lalita Dasi followed. She looked at both Baba Mahashaya and Gora Hari Das Babaji and said, weeping and wailing, Look, both of you, father and son, if this boy dies, 
I shall break the kanti or the necklace of each of the other boys in the ashrama and send them home. I shall go about and preach that neither the name nor the Mahatmas have any power. I say, you are the well-wishers and benefactors of mankind. Is this boy not a human being? You are so cruel to him that for a small offense, which he has inadvertent, inadvertently committed, you are going to punish him with death? Now I have said what I had to say, and I shall see. So he was threatening them. If you don't help him, I will destroy everything <laughs> in a way. Baba Mahashaya saw that Fani was about to die. He sat near him, cross-legged, and asked those performing kirtana to sing louder. His condition worsened. His eyes turned upwards, and his body became still and motionless. Suddenly, he breathed his last, so he died. All began to weep. Baba Mahashaya shouted, Hanitai! His body trembled. He touched Hani's forehead with the great toe of his right leg. His eyes became red and moistened and wet and seemed to be fixed on someone nobody could see. He seemed to say to him something in broken words, but in a manner that was bold and spirited. Immediately, Fanny's dead body began to move and breathe, and his face became bright. Lalita Dasi, who was sitting near his feet, turned her eyes towards Baba Mahashaya. She was surprised to see that there sat, instead of him, a tall, white, and lustrous Mahapurusha with hala or plow, like uh, Balaram and Chef Plum, hala, and Mushala, a weapon which Sri Balaram, Balaram wears, so Mushala also. But as she said to the person sitting by her side, look how handsome and lustrous. And she saw again Baba Mahashaya and not the lustrous Mahapurusha. Fani was revived. Baba Mahashaya asked his companions to continue Kirtana and left the room. So interesting. Actually, probably who he saw was Yamaraj. He said to Yamaraj, don't touch him. At four o'clock in the afternoon, Baba Mahashaya called Ramdas and said, Rama, collect everyone in the ashrama and go for Nagar Kirtan and return home before sunset. 
Ramdas went out for Nagar Kirtan, and towards the evening, Baba Mahashaya went and stood at the gate, waiting for the return of the Kirtana party. He asked Lalita Dasi and Kusuma Dasi to stand on either side of the gate with a pitcher full of water, pot full of water. As the sun was about to set, the Kirtana party returned. Before the party entered the ashrama, Lalita Dasi and Kusuma Dasi poured, poured out water at the gate. The Kirtana party then began to enter the gate. Baba Mahashaya remained standing on one side. Lalita Dasi brought one more pitcher of water, which he held in his hand. Soon after, he saw a tall, fearful-looking person with long yellow hair standing on end and copper-colored eyes sinking deep into his, its sockets, trailing behind at a distance of about five yards from the tail end of the party. So somebody was following them. Everyone was frightened to see him. Baba Mahashaya poured the pitcher of water over his head and said, fly, fly. And the fellow began to shout and shriek. Then, as Baba Mahashaya ran after him with a lathi or bamboo stick in his hand, he took to his heels, he started to run away. Baba Mahashaya got the place, got to the place where he stood smeared with cow dung. Then he said, there is no danger now, rest assured. That frightful figure was cholera, disease cholera. He is now gone and will not come again. Interesting. What a story. It's interesting how we can see the belief in Harinama and, and as Babaji Mahashaya said in previous parts when we were listening, that we just need to have faith in Harinama and all will be okay. And we can see in many occasions how Harinama helped cure diseases, helped people in many ways, gave peace to everyone. And in this case, even chased away the disease, cholera. So it's so interesting how this Baba did many inter interesting uh, plays. We can see actually something also, uh, one more thing here, uh, that in one moment when he was talking with someone, probably Yamaraj, that he appeared as Balaram, like he is Balaram himself. We still don't know. I mean, maybe after in the story, we will find out more. 
But for now, we could see many stories that are very mystical, where he was bringing people from death and where he was curing diseases. Many, we will say, like uh, miracles. Of course, he would say, this is not him, but who is doing this? It's Nittai. Nittai. And he says, it will be as Nittai wants. How Nittai wants. So in one way, we also are, we will say, children of Nittai. We are in that line, disciple succession from Nita. And we also can give ourselves to Nita and believe that he will help us. That he will help us to come closer to our Ishtadev, to be more connected, more peaceful, And that our bhakti, bhakti lata grows in our hearts. That it's always showered with kripa. And nita can always help us. So, I would like to stop here with the story. And the next time we will continue. I have so many stories with this uh, Shirada Raman Charandas Baba. So, really, it's interesting.